Now we welcome Ahmed Musa from the Maldives, who will now give us a presentation. Mr. Musa is a Maldives Special Envoy for Science and Technology and is currently looking into implementing the new initiative announced by President Mohamed Nasheed to go carbon neutral in the next 10 years. Mr. Musa, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Presiding Officer, Honorable Members, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's obviously a very big event and it's a great honor for me to be able to participate in this very important and timely debate. I thank the organizers and uh, the Scottish Parliament for giving us this tremendous opportunity to contribute. Climate change is the biggest challenging challenge facing mankind today. The Maldives is a group of small, or in Scottish, we coral islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Blue skies, crystal clear warm water, white coral sand, Maldives, a paradise of sparkling image of perfection, is how journalists often describe the Maldives, one of the most exotic holiday destinations in the world. But we also have reports describing Maldives, paradise, soon to be lost. Climate change is threatening to wipe away this natural wonder. Honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, global warming was never a myth. We can witness its effects across the globe. When I studied at Glasgow University in 1990s, we had snow throughout the winter months, but it hardly snows now, as you most people know. The summers are now warmer than ever here in Scotland and throughout the world. In the Maldives, several islands have been severely affected. Coastal and beach erosion, frequent flooding and freshwater shortages are all attributed to climate change. The El Nino of 1997 caused severe coral bleaching in our reefs, as well as in several other similar habitats around the world. The recent floods in the UK, reports of severe hurricanes are all extreme weather events. Honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, the Maldives is a very small country, but we have our own language, our own culture and traditions. In fact, we have been living in a relatively pristine environment for well over 3,000 years. If sea level rise as predicted, then we lose everything. Climate change is a real threat to our existence. Honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, the world must come together to save our planet from peril, not only the Maldives. There is absolutely no doubt that the leaders of the industrial nations have the biggest role to play in this greatest of human endeavors. We in the Maldives are most encouraged by initiatives taken by the Scottish Parliament to pass new measures to challenge this very important issue. I think this is a historic opportunity for Scotland to lead the world and lay down strong measures to combat climate change. And as Scotland is my second home, I'm very proud of it. Honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, the new democratic government of the Maldives is committed to tackling the threats of climate change. President Mohammed Nasheed announced earlier this month that the Maldives shall aim to be the first carbon neutral country by investing in renewable energy and decarbonizing our economy. In addition, we are also inviting researchers and scientists to come to the Maldives and out outposts to be their research hubs. We are already signing agreements with European universities. Honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, a UN study published in January offered evidence that global warming undermined a number of basic rights such as food, water, shelter, health, life, and self-determination. Maldives has since successfully lobbied in the UN Human Rights Council to adopt a resolution to hold a panel discussion on the relationship between human rights and climate change. The Maldives-led resolution secured the support of 82 co-sponsors, including 15 members of Alliance of Small Island States and key allies such as India, Sri Lanka, and the UK this week to hold the panel debate in Geneva this July before Copenhagen. We call on the world to come together in a spirit of solidarity to tackle climate change in Copenhagen later this year. I will now present 
some facts and figures about the impact of climate change in the Maldives. Basically, Maldives has a population less than 400,000 people, according to estimates. We have around 1,200 islands, and 200 of those are roughly inhabited. The area is uh, 298 square kilometers, and most of it is sea, more than 99%. Tourism and fisheries are the main industries in the Maldives. Our GDP per capita is approximately $3,000 per person. The capital island of Mali is the smallest capital in the world. It's about two square kilometers. It has a population of around 120,000. The majority of uh, the Maldivians have, uh, Maldive islands have less than 2,000 living in them. Mali is the industrial hub and the financial hub of the country. It is protected by a seawall donated by the Japanese people, and it was one of the key reasons why Mali was spared in the tsunami, recent tsunami. Uh, the critical issue for the Maldives is that it's a very flat country. The average elevation is less than 1.5 above sea level. Floodings reported in many islands these days and coastal and beach erosion are commonplace. Fresh water shortage is, is, is a major issue as well. And Maldives contribute less than 0.001% to greenhouse gas emissions in the world, but we are the biggest uh, we, we are the, going to be the biggest victims of this if IPCC projections are met. Here you see uh, after the events of El Nino in 87, 97, coral bleaching as a result of, of rising temperatures and we saw uh, bleaching in many areas across the country. Um, flooding obviously causes houses um, built in these islands to, to get destroyed. And here you see the um, beach erosion, normally the beach goes quite nicely into the sea, but here you see all the sand is gone. Um, what are we doing to, um, what is our strategy? Basically, we lobby, like we said, in, um, to have a debate in Copen, uh, before Copenhagen, and we need uh, help from the international community to develop our capacity, build our people, we, we want to, uh, the technology to be transferred to the Maldives, and obviously, as a uh, relatively poor country, we also need funding and financial assistance from, del from the developing world. The president um, announced this week that we will try and go carbon neutral within the next 10 years. Some of our resorts are already attempting that. Um, there is an ongoing focus on driving forward the international commitments, we have a, a national adaptation program of action, trying to protect um, islands as much as we can. And we are going to introduce uh, renewable energy to the Maldives, which is going to be one of the biggest tasks of uh, my uh, work. Uh, we are looking into cooperate with international research organizations. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we want Maldives to be a research hub for uh, scientists. In summary, climate change is a real threat to the very existence of our country. The Maldives needs international support um, in, in combating this, and we will uh, continue to um, campaign and get a strong commitment from the international community in Copenhagen. And we want to uh, lead by example as much as we can by going carbon neutral within the next 10 years. Um, thank you very much. We believe together we can save, save this world Mr. Musa, thank you very much. I, I have spent, like many other people, I'm sure, many a long hour looking at pictures of those beautiful islands in, in holiday brochures, and I can only imagine queues of researchers uh, lining up to, to accept Mr. Musa's invitation to create a hub there. Thank you very much indeed. Um,